introducing the system operator for the Commodore 64. I call it SysOp64. It's another FPGA cartridge for the Commodore 64. This time we'll use the popular DE10 Nano board. Let's start with the carrier board. Similar to the IceVic board, it's just level shifters and connectors for the DE10 Nano. Once again, we have a pass-through port to allow use of your other cartridges. To attach to the DE10 Nano, remove the top plate, orient it like so, and attach to the carrier board. The carrier board also has I.O. connectors to pass signals to a top plate PCB. The I.O. connector provides access to 31 GPIO signals plus the Commodore 64's reset and NMI lines. In this case, I'll use my logo board that has three buttons and a pair of light emitting diodes in the logo that light up when DMA access occurs. To install, just like the ICE VIC, you'll need the three wires that enable proper bus interpretation connected to your CPU's Sharon, Hiram, and Lorem signals. On the SD card, we have our customized FPGA Core and Linux OS, plus a partition that holds a library of Commodore 64 software. You should always power up the FPGA board first, then the Commodore 64. I use one of these rocker switches to make that easy to do. You'll see video output at the early stages of boot, followed by a forced reset which signals that the Linux OS has booted fully. Note that we're running the same IceVic video core, but in this case we have output at 1080p the DE10 Nano hardware and a full Linux OS enables a nearly unlimited set of new capabilities for the Commodore 64. The FPGA Core provides a DMA engine, a bus sampler, as well as access to a separate frame buffer that can be overlaid on top of the Commodore 64's video. In upcoming videos, we'll dive deeper into each of these exciting new capabilities that will bring new life to your Commodore 64, so stay tuned.